This, this is my living room. And as you can see, I really like light and coziness. But there's one thing that really keeps on bugging me. This is the Xiaomi Candela. And although it's a very nice light, the battery seems to be always empty. Let's do something about that. Here is my self-made vision of the Xiaomi Candela. But I'll call this one the Solumen. 20 hours of runtime on max brightness, magnetic charging base, USB-C. Brighter than the Xiaomi light. Real glass dome instead of plastic. Realistic flame effect. Cheaper. Low battery indicator. 100% self-made. On top of having a very bad battery that barely lasts an evening, it is a pain in the ass to charge the thing. You really have to go and fiddle with a micro USB cable until it's in there. And that is one of the better cables. Don't try other ones. Imagine doing this every day to just have some light in the evening. This video is going to be a four part series. The first part is going to be the electronics and how I figured that out. The second part is going to be how I designed the tube for the light, then the design of the light, and then I'll finish off with a complete build video on how to do it yourself. The first thing I had to do is try to recreate the nice warm glow of the Xiaomi light. The Xiaomi light has a 1600 Kelvin color temperature and a very high CRI, which is color rendering index. And that is how the quality of the light spectrum is. Uh, obviously, my cheap LED that I got off of a light strip is not matching it even close. It looks like pink to the camera. To the eye, it looked a little better, but to the camera, it's terrible. Um, I try to mix the red and the green to reproduce a nice orange by using some resistors. But obviously with this quality of light I am not happy. So I'm going to continue my search and hopefully find something better. Before running to the internet I found this in my garden which was a broken garden light and apparently it has these nice surface mount amber colored LEDs. I figured out that they can really shine quite bright and they have a good color temperature. As a testing purpose this was good for me but I want stuff from the internet so that everybody can build the same light as I'm going to make. Here I'm trying uh, to put a fire LED that you can find in for example these cheap flickery lights from any store um, to put it in series with a normal LED and Apparently it blocks the flow of the current and makes the other LED also flicker, which is super nice because now I can use the circuitry of a fire LED to manipulate a normal LED. This definitely comes closer to the quality of the Xiaomi light, but is not there yet. As you can see, this cheap circuit of the fire LED is not producing a nice flicker so far. It's quite harsh, just feels very artificial. On top of that, it's using pulse width modulation, which you can see on the camera here. It's dimming the light by rapidly flickering it on and off, and I don't like that. As you can see here, I'm adding 2000 nanofarad capacitors to it, and it instantly smooths it out, and it gives you this realistic flame effect, which is so much nicer. In the future, when I'm using a transistor to boost it to, a, to an even bigger LED, I'm going to also have to work with capacitors, but probably a way bigger value than these two for the small LED. So we'll deal with that later. It's already good to see that it works. And here's the first prototype of a circuit that appears to be working. It's drawing around 150 to 160 uh, milliamps from the battery. That goes through a 22K resistor, which uh, lights up the fire LED, which gets 2.4 to 2.6 volts. Fire LED provides the fluctuating current, so the boost circuit can power a 1 watt high power LED, which gets smoothed by a big capacitor bank. It could use a little bit more smoothing still, so I'll have a look into some bigger capacitors. But as you see, with a temporary dome over it, it looks already quite nice, and I'll have a look if this circuit is stable. The transistor could use a little heatsink since it was getting quite warm. And as you can see, I made a more compact version of what you just saw. I also tinkered around with the thought of making my own magnets that would clip together for the charging base. I went back on that because this didn't work that well, uh, but for now it was perfectly fine. So here I had a compact setup to see if it would keep on running. So I took it everywhere with me, uh, to the kitchen table, to the living room, also checking the voltage every once in a while to see how long it would run for. And I also had a timer going. 
I even had to go to Germany and I took it in a little lunchbox so I could take it everywhere with me while I was on a trip. And uh, while being there, I realized that this circuit was not finished yet because it was running on a 731 milliampere battery and it was going for 17 hours. So it basically got dimmer and dimmer towards the end of the lifespan of the battery. And I don't like that. I want a consistent light that you can set to a certain brightness and it stays there until the battery is completely empty. While I was on the trip, I also went into every store to check uh, for glass that I could use as a dome because most glass is very hard to find with a thin bottom because I'm going to use it upside down as a dome for the for the light and I don't want it to look like a glass so finding a glass that doesn't look like a glass when upside down is very hard to find. This one for example is quite nice but it was more as an inspiration that I looked at these things because I want something from the internet that I can model to and so everybody online can make exactly the same light and that so that the glass dome will basically fit. I also looked into what to use as a diffuser for the inner tube of the light and just simple tracing paper worked perfect for this. When I arrived home I also got a whole bunch of packages from AliExpress with a whole bunch of little electronic components that I might need for this project. Uh, while I was in Germany I also had a lot of time to do research in how to do the electronics for this project because I'm really the type of person that uh, likes to start researching stuff the moment I have something in mind uh, for a project and if I don't really know how to do it I can really go hours and hours until I figure out how to achieve my goal. Here are the charge connectors that work through magnets and this is what I'm going to use for the charging base. And as you can see there's a whole bunch of packages but a lot of stuff is just big boxes with transistors and uh, resistors and all kinds of stuff that I can use for future projects. So it's a good buy I guess. Um, the most important thing here is what I'm opening at the moment which are the glasses. Which I think will be nice. It's like a type of modern but also old school like gas burner light look that I'm going for and these are really perfect for it. Sadly enough one came in the mail like this. I did order a bit extra though because that's always a chance if you order glass from China I guess. Uh, the ones that did make it uh, in their complete state look super nice though. I'm really happy with them. Cheers! Up until now I used a white LED with a little bit of colored film over it to stand in for the light you're seeing on the screen now. This one arrived just now uh, from AliExpress and look at the quality of the light. This is really as good as the Xiaomi light and I'm super happy with it. I'm definitely going with that one. It's an amber LED and it's 3 watt which we totally don't need. That's way too much but that's good. We can underpower it. What you also see here is a potentiometer that I added with a nice knob so we can dim the light. Because on max brightness it is super bright but that's really what I wanted. Next I'm experimenting with a 5 volt boost converter to put it in line with the circuit and as you can see it puts out 5 point, around 5.2 volts with an incoming signal of 4.2 which is a full lithium battery. Uh, this will uh, ensure that the circuit is always getting a stable voltage regardless of the battery voltage as you can see. If I'm turning it down so I'm giving it around 2.6 volts which is a very empty battery then the circuit should still well, it is using a lot of amperage now and I don't like that because it's a really inefficient boost converter. I'll definitely have to change that around, but as you can see the LED is still as bright and the voltage is no longer 5.2 volts, so it really dropped a lot. That's why I'm using a better boost converter that's also way more efficient. Uh, at the moment it's uh, shining quite bright and uh, it is uh, the battery is at 3.3 volts so it's about to get empty there and the circuit is using 400 milliamps from the battery so that is definitely something I can go with. Also note that this is at max brightness and most people will probably turn it down a bit. At the moment the battery management board cuts off the battery at 3.45 volts which is quite low for a lithium cell and not the best if you want to have a, a lot of uh, charge cycles out of it. Uh, so I did some research and there is a new chip that cuts the battery off a little sooner but I did a lot of digging around and I did not find it anywhere implemented in a ready-made circuit uh, like you buy, can buy on uh, AliExpress. Here you can see that it does work with the current chip 
there we go. On the left you can see the chip that's being implemented in all the current battery management boards and it cuts the voltage at 2.4 volt. On the right you see the new chip that's supposed to cut the battery a bit sooner, it says 2.9 volts here and that sounds way better for the battery. Um, you can interchange these chips because they're only controlling the MOSFETs that are opening and closing the circuit and they're based on the same package size. They came in uh, a whole roll. <laughs> probably used in manufacturing to stamp them out. Uh, they are super tiny. Uh, you can find them on all kinds of battery management board like this one or the one I'm using in the project which is a battery management board and a charging board. As you can see I replaced it. I haven't tried it yet but let's do it together. Let's see if it cuts out sooner than 3.45 and now hopefully it will turn off about now. And it doesn't. <laughs> Shit. Oh, but it does go a little sooner then. Ah, uh, well. So that was kind of a disappointment. Here I'm looking at what voltage it exactly cuts out. Still going. Still. And it dropped off. So at 2.55 volts, the new circuit cuts the power, which is, I mean, it's a point 10 volts difference. It is not worth the effort of ordering these extra chips and especially putting them on the board, replacing them is a super tedious process. Still, it was quite interesting doing the research and seeing that you can actually replace these chips uh, even though it's not that useful. As an alternative to the battery management board cutting off the battery, I am making a circuit that will give you a little indicator light the moment the battery reaches 3.1 volts. You are notified beforehand that hey you should better charge your battery and uh, this way preserve the lifespan and also be notified so you know like hey the light is on it will probably work another hour or an hour and a half so here's that circuit put into a prototype board it was not finished yet because uh, as you can see it's not turning on at the voltage that i wanted yet rather it turns on at 2.8 volts which is too low in my opinion so for the first time in my life i started looking into how to design my own circuits which I really wanted to be able to do for so long and it's so much fun to like have everything all of a sudden start to make sense and to be able to do it yourself and and I mean I just love learning stuff like this and I always wanted to be able to do that but on the other hand that's one of the reasons that it takes so long for me to make these videos I won't go in too much detail here because it's just me figuring out stuff and quite boring probably but in the end I got this which I hope is a working circuit so let's put it to the test this is already half of it in working order so good so far and then after that I did a whole bunch of more uh, iterations and tried out different layouts until I arrived at what I'm happy to more or less call the final design and just like that we come at the end of the first part of this video series I hope you liked it please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when the next video in the series releases which I promise won't take so long anymore but unfortunately my car broke down I got a new car for free but it turned out to be quite the project to get it up and running properly and get it through the car check which I'm still working on at this moment and I videotaped a lot of that so I'll take you on this car restoration journey in one of the upcoming videos so see See you then.